Barbie, Air Jordan, Tetris, Pinball, Blackberry, Flaming Hot Cheetos. You're being bombarded with brand movies and you are sick of them. Hollywood has run out of adaptation and remake ideas and are now onto another type of intellectual property, big brands. Anything to get a movie out there with a famous name attached to it, right? Now these films aren't all bad, but they're certainly not as good as that Facebook movie with Justin Timberlake. However, there is another company movie from a few years ago that is extremely underrated, and it deserves more love and recognition because it has the balls, to be honest, about why some people are very successful, and others like you probably won't be. McDonald's. Allow me to explain. If you didn't know what McDonald's was, you'd think the founder was a fictional story. It's the 50s, and this guy named Ray Kroc, even his name sounds made up, is a failed milkshake machine salesman who is going door to door, trying to sell overpriced mixers to restaurants. Then he runs into the McDonald brothers, two genuine small town guys who opened up a hamburger joint in California and run an incredibly efficient business where they give you your burger and fries in record speed and for a very low price. He becomes obsessed with their restaurant, and as we'll find out later, the name of the restaurant, and convinces them to open up franchises everywhere, including in Illinois where Ray is from. They're reluctant at first, because to them, quality trumps quantity. But then they give in, and lo and behold, the evil businessman successfully screws them over, buys them out of the company, and then turns McDonald's into one of the biggest brands in the world. The real story isn't much different, but much like The Social Network, the film needed a good versus evil story, so it kind of bends the truth a little bit to fit that narrative. The movie paints Ray Kroc as this shrewd evil businessman who gets on top of the world and screws over the little guy. The movie ends with him buying the brothers out for a mere $1.35 million each, which we all know is peanuts compared to what McDonald's is worth, while he goes on to be extremely wealthy himself with their company. Now, all of that did happen, but the movie conveniently ignores that at the time Ray Kroc did this, he didn't actually have a lot of money, and it was really hard for him to get $2.7 million to buy them out. He wasn't a billionaire who got some pocket change and gave it to the brothers like he was feeding scraps to stray dogs. He almost went bankrupt trying to raise that money, and so he took a huge risk buying them out and continuing with his plans, which we all know now worked out great for him, but it could have backfired too. Also, the $2.7 million was their figure, not Crocs. That was the money they asked for to walk away from the company. $2.7 mil so they pay $700 in taxes and end up with $1 million each. And by the way, one million in 1961 when the deal went down is close to 10 million in today's money, that's not exactly pocket change considering McDonald's was still in its infancy and with an uncertain future. Also, the brothers were reportedly more than happy to be bought out and retire than the movie wants you to believe. In the film, they are basically bullied into it by Croc, and they have no choice but to accept his lousy offer. In real life, just like the Winkelvoss twins were initially happy with the Facebook settlement only to later realize the company would become much more valuable, the McDonald's bros were not too sad about their 27 million retirement deal in today's money until McDonald's became huge. Then they probably went, I've made a huge mistake, and felt screwed over. But were they really? Now don't get me wrong, Ray Kroc was a ruthless bastard indeed, and also a petty one, he really did force the brothers to stop calling their original place McDonald's, and then opened a McDonald's right across the street from their original place to force them out of business. He also went back on the handshake deal and never properly acknowledged the brothers for their role as the true founders of the company. So I'm not saying he was a good man and the movie vilified him unfairly. Most of this stuff did happen, but the script does bend the truth a little bit to make the McDonald's bros bigger victims than they actually were. Remember, Ray was the one who built McDonald's into a global company while they just sat in their original small restaurant and got a lot of money out of it without lifting a finger. Are they really victims? But let's not let the truth get in the way of a good drama. This movie further proves something we've all known for a while. Michael Keaton is a hell of an actor. This guy can play any role and make it memorable. And I think he was extremely believable in this film as the failed salesman who finally gets a break and turns into a ruthless businessman. Nowadays, every time I see a McDonald's, I think of Keaton as Ray Kroc. Even though I've grown up watching him in many roles, I had no problem buying him as the evil businessman of the 50s. This guy can play anything. It's a shame he didn't get more recognition for this role. This movie could have been much more boring without his performance. In a future video, we'll do a deep dive into this great man's career and all the great roles he's had. But for now, let's get back to the founder.
A good takeaway from this film is that it's not enough to be good at something to be successful, and knowing how to implement a good idea is much more important than coming up with it. Steve Jobs didn't invent the mouse. He never even had the knowledge or skills to build one. But as soon as he saw a prototype at Xerox, he knew it was something people would want to use with a computer and took an idea that wasn't his and helped transform it into a revolutionary product. That's why this movie is fascinating. It makes you wonder, whose idea was this really? Because on one hand, McDonald's is the invention of the McDonald brothers. It's literally their name. But on the other hand, the McDonald's we know today was built after Ray Kroc took over. The world-famous logo, the Big Mac, that stupid clown, the aggressive franchising. Franchise. 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 All the things we associate with this brand came after Ray bought out the McD bros and took control of the company. So who is the founder, really? The best scene in the movie comes at the very end where, spoiler alert, Ray buys McDonald's from the brothers, and the movie makes it feel like the villain just won. There is a bathroom scene right after where Ray Kroc and one of the brothers, Dick, talk one final time. Dick asks Ray why he went through so much trouble to get into McDonald's and then take it away from them when he could have easily just stolen the whole concept and make his own after the brothers gave him the kitchen tour. Ray answers with a lesson in branding. What a fail. Well, because they all lack that one thing that makes McDonald's special. It's the name. That glorious name, McDonald's. Sounds like America. There was simply something special about a burger joint called McDonald's that served burgers extremely fast and efficiently. And Ray Kroc instinctively knew this from the moment he first saw it. This film finds a brilliant way of successfully breaking the show-don't-tell rule by having the main character actually looking at the camera and telling you the main takeaway from this film. One word. Persistence. As Ray is rehearsing a speech in front of his mirror, he tells you exactly what this movie is about. Persistence and determination alone are all powerful. I have met people in their early 20s who were depressed because they didn't know what they wanted to do with their lives and already felt like they were too old to have this dilemma. This mother was 52, in the 50s, mind you, when even 30 was an old age, and never gave up. So remember, you are never too old to start over, find purpose in life, or trick two small town boys into handing you over their multi-billion dollar idea. See you next time. If you like this video, check out our other stuff and then hit subscribe. Don't be lazy.